Hey all, Bill Bachman here with another lesson slash blog for drumworkout.com and the Vic Firth lesson series. This one is on technique, velocity, and speed. Okay, this is yet another one where you gotta use your thinker a little bit. We're gonna get deep, right? But it's going to affect a lot of things you play and make you a smarter player knowing why you do what you do. Okay, so the story goes like this. I'm in my kitchen, probably making mac and cheese. It's about as far as I get. And I have this slotted spoon, and by that I mean hold spoon with holes in it. And I started air drumming, and I hear the whip sound, and I started listening to it. And then I started sort of analyzing what was going on with this type of stroke I was playing and the pitch of the whip and whatnot. So hopefully this little lav mic here will pick up some of that whippingness. So we'll see. So I wanted to think about uh, different velocities of strokes, okay? So velocity of strokes, velocity is speed. So if I play slow strokes, I can play low and slow, very light. I can play faster. I can play even faster strokes, right? Go nuts. Whoa, see, that's what happens. It's a dangerous world we live in. Okay, a little bit too loose. So. The, uh, the stick height was directly affecting the velocity of the strokes, okay? Because it's not about playing hard, it's about playing big. There's another lesson all about that. So the slotted spoon really demonstrated some of this really well. So the faster the spoon goes, the higher pitch the whip. And so I noticed that I did some tests and sure enough, all the theories rang true, okay? So let's think about basic wrist strokes and how we accelerate the stick to a higher speed, okay? If we just use fingers, let's see how fast I can go. So here I go. Right, there's a little bit of speed there. Now let me try just using wrist. Start here. A good bit more, right? Basically, this is moving faster because instead of this being right here, using the fulcrum up front, I'm now using the second fulcrum being the wrist. There's a way bigger arch there than there is here with the fingers, so there's more speed at the beat of the stick or the little holes in the spoon. A hold spoon is a better name for that. Okay, so that's why here's fingers, doesn't go that fast. And just wrist. Okay, so we get a lot more speed using wrist than the fingers. Now, what if we use wrist and fingers together? There's a whole lot more right there, right? So here again, I'll do fingers, wrist, then both together. So fingers, wrist, both, right? A lot more. So now the arm can add some speed as well. Incidentally, remember, all speed is volume. That's how we want to think about it, right? The faster the stroke speed, the bigger the volume, the, yeah, okay. So now if I add arm to that, we can get a little bit more. But what about just arm? So let's try just arm, okay? I'm getting some speed, but I actually just got more with the pretty much fingers there, okay? So arm, as much as we think about playing really big and aggressively and tons of arm, a lot of times, you know, we're not using molar whipping technique here. We're just using arm adding to the wrist stroke foundation, okay? All that arm doesn't really add that much. So I see a lot of players who play with a ton of arm, but they're not using that much fingers and so they're actually losing out on a lot of velocity slash speed of stroke slash power. So let me add arm, wrist, and fingers all together. Okay, that's pretty serious. So now I'm gonna do fingers, wrist, arm, and wrist. There's three variations as you sort of build up the wrist stroke, okay? So here's just fingers, uh, just wrist, and arm, wrist, fingers, right? So we get a lot more speed as we add each element. Now, an important thing to note here is you want to use those fingers because, again, a lot of guys tend to play wristy and army, but you're missing out because you can really get pretty much as much or more speed from the fingers, which is way more efficient than that arm. So make sure you use all three in tandem. And generally, my rules are if the wrist can do it, let the wrist do it. If the wrist would struggle, the fingers come in to bail out the wrist. If the hand would struggle, then the arm comes in to bail out the hand. So that's kind of, as you add power, that's kind of how, how things scale. Not necessarily power, but speed. They're variables, but you get the idea. 
Okay, now, that is a wrist stroke with arm and fingers backing it up. Now, let's try a molar whipping stroke. Okay, so here, uh, you can check out, you know, drumworkout.com step 23, I think is all about the molar whip stroke. Check that stuff out, uh, also in stick techniques, some really in-depth thing, not the bugger da bugger da bugger da bugger da but the actual whip stroke itself where you really look at the foundation of that technique. So this is the other category of drumming. I can divide it all into two categories. On this side, there's wrist stroke, where arm embellishes the wrist and fingers, you know, help the wrist. Then on this side is the molar whipping technique, which I just, I wish we could just call it whip, but that's okay. And that is a forearm driven stroke where the wrist in its pure form does nothing, right? So without elaborating too much on that, let me try a nice big molar whip stroke. So we have more speed immediately. So now let me try, I'll go the wrist stroke with the arm and fingers, all cylinders firing and now a molar whip stroke, right? So there's a lot more loud, high-pitched whip because there's a lot more speed. So if you want to play really big and powerfully with a whole very relaxed hands, you want that molar whip for your, your biggest boom whack, right? If you're just going to fire something out once and go boom, you definitely want that massive whip coming from the arm, all right? So beyond that, as you get smaller, avoid just wristing it out or just adding some arm and having stiffness and your hand locked up because you know, there's all kinds of negatives there. But among other things, you're cheating yourself for that velocity that the fingers can bring, all right? So there you go. Go to your kitchen, make some good old mac and cheese like your single days if, if that's how you're rolling and uh, check out your slotted slash hold spoon. Do this experiment for yourself and you'll see those different elements of technique adding different amounts of velocity to the strokes. So more velocity equals more power by way of playing big, not playing hard. All right, efficiency and musicality are gonna come from that. So analyze what your hands are doing, check it out, and you will be a better player for it.